Hello everyone and welcome to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. Today is yet another highly anticipated video. Beth, I am looking at you. We are going to take a look at an idea that sprouted from one of the colouring groups that I belong to on Facebook, which is The Colouring Connection, if you're interested in checking that out. It's an absolutely amazing bunch of people in that group. I love you all, you're awesome. And I posted a picture from Johanna Basford's Enchanted Forest and the reason that I posted it, it was uncoloured, there wasn't a scrap of pencil on it and I was really unmotivated and uninspired by this particular picture and I basically reached out to everyone for some ideas or some inspiration or even any sort of sense of direction and I got so many replies to that post and one suggestion was made by Nila or Nyla, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name so yeah you can let me know about that in the comments if you're watching this and she suggested doing a wood grain effect or like a wood carving effect so let little Jem buzzed about in the cave and tried some things out and I ended up doing the entire page which took forever but I was really pleased with the results and I posted that back on the same group once I was finished and everybody went nuts for it and said oh are you going to do a tutorial on this so da da here we are so thank you again for the suggestion it's much appreciated and I'm going to go to top down view now down here and we are going to make a start and I will show you how to achieve what I have done in that colouring page. Let's get going. The page that I was talking about in Enchanted Forest, my poor battered copy of Enchanted Forest, was this one here. Now one of the things that I've noticed straight away is that on the monitor, the background looks very, very washed out. It's actually a bit richer than that in real life. But I'm going to give you a kind of look at the level of detail and what I actually did across this entire page. And I was trying to make it look as if it was more of a wood carving rather than just a pattern that was on something wood grain, if you like. I did this with Prismacolor pencils. And... As I mentioned in the introduction, it, it, it took forever. It's a very, very detailed and delicate operation to do something like this. And this really was a first sort of experimental stage of it. So you can see that I have quite a lot of heavy shading in areas like this and not so much down the bottom. And I, this was basically me finding my feet with it. I'm still really pleased with how it turned out uh, because as I say, I had, I had no inspiration for it at all to begin with. So this is what we're going to try and achieve. Although I use Prismacolor pencils to do this page, I would actually not recommend them for this technique. And as you can see, there are a lot of very fine little sort of flicky type pencil strokes and in order to achieve those and achieve the definition in them you need to keep a very very sharp pencil one of the pencils i used in this which was the darkest brown i actually went through an entire prismacolor pencil just on this picture and there was no breakages or anything it was me actually using it up so it's this is not um very kind on your pencils so i would suggest a harder pencil if you've got one available and on that point no pun intended point get it ah! i took the time to do a bit of preparation and i have here a list of the colors i actually used initially which was the prisma colors and i've tried to match them up as best i can with the polychromos range and the crayola range because those are pencils that i own so if you have the other pencils just take a moment to pause the video and you can get the the colors together that you need to follow along today i'm going to do our little test in polychromos pencils for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, I am using the Crayolas for something else and they are everywhere and I don't fancy raking through them to find the pencils, but also the book that we're going to be working in, I haven't tried my polychromos pencils in, so I would really like to do it with the polychromos. If you want to stick to the Prisma colour, make sure you've got a pencil sharpener handy and these are the colours that you need. The only real issues I had with trying to match up the colours was actually with the Polychromos range, which I find quite entertaining. I didn't have anything similar to the Putty Beige and the taupe in the Crayola range is very, very close to it. The next closest thing I could get was Warm Grey too, which is slightly paler, but there's no great difference there. But the main one is the yellow ochre, the nearest thing I could get was brown ochre, which is considerably darker. But anyway, that's what we're going to go with. I hope you've got a note of these now. I'm going to move this out of the way. 
Now we are going into World of Flowers by Johanna Basford. Now obviously you can use this technique in any colouring book. It doesn't have to be a Johanna Basford book and more specifically it doesn't have to be this book. So when we're thinking about our wood carving we do have to think in layers which is exactly what I did in the other piece and you have to think that when you're carving something in wood you're sort of drilling down through the various depths of the piece of wood that you're working on and that's going to create different textures and different colours and shades and things as you're going down. So the first thing that I did was work on a sort of background colour. To get started then I am going to be using the light yellow ochre and surprise surprise I'm going to put a light layer down in this circular background area. Normally I would say to not bother about being too careful about this first layer because we're going to be going back over it but on this occasion I am going to be a little bit more careful and make sure I've got as much coverage as I can do but I am still keeping uh, a light hand when I am putting down this layer that's uh, it's not terribly important but I think just for depth of colour that it's it, it it kind of matters a little bit more than normal on this occasion. Now the nice thing about a wood texture is that by nature it is very irregular so you don't have to painstakingly go over and smooth everything out and make it one of these really sort of polished burnished type pictures because that's really not the feel we're going for at all. In fact we're going for quite the opposite. And I think this is something that lends itself perfectly, certainly to my colouring style, because I do let a lot of the white of pa the paper show through. I do like texture and I like that sort of variation that you can get just by being slightly haphazard. So this, this very much suits me, very, very much suits me. I will also say as well that if you want to colour a picture or part of your picture quickly, this technique is not the way to do it. Because of all the little details, it is quite time consuming. And I, I actually wish I'd kept track of the number of hours I spent on the page in Enchanted Forest because it was a lot. I mean, it really, really was a lot. I ended up, I was able to finish it up because... There was one day with uh, my work, I'm, I'm an agricultural consultant and I work from home and my work server was down in the afternoon and I, so I physically couldn't do any work but I had to sit and watch the, you know, the analysis and the diagnostics on the system to, you know, to be ready to go when it was back up and running. So I was sitting with the computer screen open and I just took that opportunity to to get the book out, the pencils out and see if I could get on, you know, ways to finish it. And I, I sat there for four hours and that was the only reason I finished it a lot quicker than I thought I would. I thought it was going to take me weeks, but if I hadn't had that straight four hour slot, I probably would, it probably would have taken me a lot longer. <laughs> But that just goes to show you there's there's some good that comes out and everything. And if all else fails, you can always colour in. <laughs> there we go. So I'm just finishing up here now. Get around here. Do, 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 do. So we've got a layer of this down now. And that's just to start sort of putting a tint on the paper. Get us going. And the next thing I'm going to take is the Warm Grey 2. I hate these pencils because the writing is really difficult to show you. Ooh, there we go that's about as good as it's going to get and all I'm going to do is lightly and quickly run this pencil over the top so you're going to start to get a slightly mottled effect and once again it's one of those ones I know this is really pale just now but the minute you start doing it you will see the, the, the texture of this darker colour on top of your your base colour there and that is exactly what we want. Now we are going to go back and sort of tweak this and fix it up a bit, but this is just the sort of grounding that I started from to, you know, to get the get the picture going, so 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 so, so, so to speak. So not being as careful here, still keeping a a light hand. Again, look how far back my hand is up the pencil. Squish this down in here. Maybe a bit more in there as well. 
So that's going to give your, your base colour a kind of like a quite a dirty look, but it's also going to darken it down slightly, which is exactly what we want. So now we want to think about what is overlapping what. I've picked this one deliberately because it is quite a simple design, but we still have a little bit of overlap here. So we have to decide what parts of the picture are in what layer. So on the bottom is this background and the next section up is going to be these tulips because there are things behind it, which is the background, and there are things in front of it, which are these grasses. Now, even with the grasses, you can see down here that some of them overlap others. So if we just take this section here, I'm trying to explain this as clearly as possible because remember, I've figured this out in my tiny mind. You can see that they are sort of layered behind each other. This one seems to be, this one here, seems to be at the very front, as does this one. And then we have a couple here that are probably mid-ground. And then we have these ones here, which are right in at the back. So that gives you options in terms of what, which of your colours you're going to use for them. I'm going to keep it relatively simple and I'll explain it as I go along. But I want you to start thinking when you're going to do this in a picture, you have to start thinking in these layers because you have to plan out in your head what, what sections are on what layer. That's quite important. So now we're going to take our next pencil, which is Bistra or Beige Sienna in the Prismacolor, Antique Brass in the Crayola. And this is where this wood effect starts to come in. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit further. I need you to be able to see my hand motion. So this is a sort of delicate balancing act. Now bearing in mind that we're going as if these have been carved into this background that we've coloured. What you want to do is get a nice sharp point and we are just going to use a flicky motion and it's best to start round the line work. So round the things that have been carved into your background. So I'm going to start here again. I like to work right to left because I'm left handed and I am literally just doing a flicky motion like that. So medium pressure, really quick hand movement. Now, one thing I will say is that to get these lines uniform and to have them all in the same direction and not wonky like this, it does take a little bit of practice, especially when you're working in tight areas like this. So if, you, if you're not confident with your pencil control, I would suggest you have a go at these and just practice a couple, you know, in different shapes to get you going until you're happy doing it. So once you've got that sorted out, we're just going to start working around the line work of the items that have been carved in. So, and all I'm going to start do is flicking this out. So it's important that your pencil is sharp. And what we want to do is we want to vary the line length. And we also want to vary how spaced out they are as well. But this is something we're going to build up. So even if I just take this tiny little triangle here, I'm going to go down the outside of my circle and I'm also going to turn my pencil every couple of flicks and that helps to keep the point and keep that nice fine line that we want. So that's the kind of effect you're going to be looking for. So when you're working on the underside of your line art, then your lines are going to come down the way and when you're on top of it, you're going to flick them up the way. For this one, we'll go up the way like this. Now we want these lines, we don't want them to encroach into anything that we haven't coloured yet, so you have to be quite careful. But where we come and we meet in a corner like this, I'm still going to put in some lines coming down the way from the bottom of this part. And see, this is just the beginning to get it started. So we're going to work our way around and we're going to do that all the way around. I'll probably speed some of this up because once you kind of get the idea behind it, there's no need for you to sit in watch me do every single painstaking line but it's it's these parts that take the time so bearing in mind you want to keep your lines either completely straight up and down or you want them completely flat and parallel left to right or right to left because if you look at anything that has a wood grain it is very 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 much parallel and it's very straight so I'm going to go to town. You can see I've got a great big long one there. Really vary that line width. 
And when you come to something that's in the same direction as your wood grain, you can just take your pencil up it and then eventually you will find where the curve starts and then you can start adding in your flicky bits again. Anyway, I'm turning the pencil as I go. You'll just be able to see that off camera. If you do get a wonky line, don't worry about it too much. Um, it, it becomes easier the more time you spend. This is, there we go, this is me sharpening already to keep that really, really fine point on my pencil. So don't worry if you have an odd line that, that goes slightly, slightly askew. It's not the end of the world. It's up to you how dense you want these flicks as well. If you're working on a really small, tiny, tiny thing, you might want to space them out because you're just going to end up with your whole picture looking brown. Or if you're working on something really large, then you might want lots of them close together. But the main thing is to vary the line length. And it's just to make it look a little bit more organic, you know, a little bit more as if it's supposed to be there. There we go. I've got my, that's my first proper wonky line. Bothered? Nope. <laughs> so you can see there, there's places as well, particularly around the slightly more complex areas. I'm leaving gaps. It's one of these ones as well. The same as with everything else in colouring. You can always go back and add to it if it's not there. If you put too much in, as we all know by now, it's much, much easier to add than it is to get rid of. So the next thing that we want to do now that we have gone round all of the objects that are going to be carved into the wood already you can see this sort of carving style taking shape but what we do have now is a lot of these bald patches in the background where there's no sort of texture at all so what we want to do is just using our eye we want to start sort of filling in these gaps a little bit now again you need to vary the lines that you're using have some tiny little flecks and have some much bigger ones and vary the pressure a little bit as well. I will say though, don't press too heavily because you will end up with that one line that just sticks out way too much. <laughs> Speaking from experience. So we just want to kind of fill that in a little bit and make it a bit more sort of believable. Because really, I mean, when we're colouring and when we're drawing, when we're arting in general, what we are doing is we are conveying an image and what we're doing is we're just conveying an outline and it's really our brains that trick us into sort of filling in the blanks as it were. So as long as you have that sort of general general impression, most people who have a, a reasonable um, logical thinking pattern will be able to see that it's wood carving. Oh, I've just realised I missed this bit in here. <sighs> Very unprofessional. The next thing I'm going to do is take my warm grey too again and I'm just very lightly going to go back over this. And it's just really to soften down some of those pencil lines because again, bear in mind, this is our background. We don't actually want this to be standing out at all. So by blending over that very sort of neutral colour, it's just softening those pencil flicks out a bit without obliterating them completely. 
I will say if you're using Prisma colours for this part, be very, very light handed when you're doing this because you will start to smudge and smear all the, you know, the lovely little flicks that you've done and spent so long doing. It just helps to spread out that sort of slightly darker brown colour as well and makes the, the wood look a bit more sort of rich, which is what we want. So pop all this down in here. And that changes the picture instantly. It really, really does. I don't know how well that's going to come across on camera, but when you do it for yourself, you will notice a difference almost straight away. It just doesn't look as stark, I think, is the, the correct word. Okay, so we're going to leave our background for a little while. What we want to do is we want to start working on just a section at a time. And that is what I did when I did it in Enchanted Forest. If I just show you here, I started with this shield. That is all that I did because it was complicated. So you just want to think of it one tiny, tiny little piece at a time. So we are going to work on this flower here as it is further back because these fronds here are in front then we're going to pick our colors carefully and go from there so we're going to start with the cream pencil and i'm going to put a light layer of that down over this entire area it's up to yourself how careful you want to be here i'm not being particularly careful but that's just me so then we want to go in with our yellow ochre which is our, our next lightest color and Really what we want to do is maybe not cover the whole thing, but we just want to add a bit of depth. So when you're doing this, think about the way you would colour when you are trying to create that illusion of a curve or when you're trying to add a shadow. You don't want it everywhere. So I'm going to put a little bit around this side and I'm going to make the one in the back there a bit darker. And I'm just running that up and down lightly over there, pressing a little bit harder in some areas rather than others. It's This is about really sort of leaving accents. It's not about picking out a particular area. You want it to be quite patchy because that's just going to add to that sort of feel, woody feeling, if you like. So now we're going to take Bistra, which is the next darkest colour. We're going to start adding in some of our flecks exactly the same way as we've done here. And in exactly the same fashion. Now I tend to make them a, a lot more intricate and a lot closer together when I am, um, wow that is really close. <laughs> I do tend to make them a lot closer together and a lot finer but I do it in exactly the same way. I go round the line work first and just get them in and then I start sort of filling in the pieces in the middle like that. Do the same in the next part. Again the, the fleck situation is entirely up to you you know, how much you want to put in, how long you want to make those lines. I just tend to vary them like this. Work my way around here. Feeling fancy with that bit. <laughs> Until you have the amount of flex that you're happy with and then after that you can stop. So now that we've done that, I'm going to go back to the colour I was using before and I am going to flick with that one as well. So I'm pressing a bit harder this time so that the colour really stands out. And I'm just going to do that all over. Like this. So if I zoom out a little bit now, you can see that it's starting to differentiate itself from what's in the background. Our next darkest pencil, which is the Burnt Umber. Now this is where things start to get interesting. What we want to do here is we now want to make this look that it's like it's been carved. And what we're going to do is surrounding this line art here, we're going to flick around most of it with this dark brown pencil, which will be light umber in the Prismacolor and dark chocolate in the Crayola. And I'm just going to show you now, with this, again, I'll show you in a scrap of paper, that's easier. Tiny, tiny little lines like this. So I'm just going to work my way down. I'm making a couple of them a little bit longer. But this is where, using this darker pencil, we are starting to lift this flower up towards us from that bottom layer. You're just making it pop out. So... We're just going to go round like this. And as I say, every now and then, just one little 
you know, one little line here and there that's kind of gone astray, you know, it's like a, it's like a rebel line. And it's just to keep that nice organic feel because that's what we want. Now, when we get to a side like this, where you're basically going to start going up the way, you can actually bring those flicks out a bit like this. And then you can start from there and you can add them in. I would say with this, less is definitely more. And if you feel you need to go back in, then do so. But as I say, I've been keeping these lines quite tightly pressed together. There we go. So now this is the start of it. This is what we want. And lastly, for this roundabout edge, we're going to take our darkest colour. And we're basically going to use this as a, as a liner pencil. So decide if you want a light source or if you want to do it all the way around. I am going to do all the left hand sides with this. And it's again, this is just to add depth to it. So I'm just going to work away here and I'm just following the liner. And essentially all I'm doing is thickening it up. Like this. And I'm going to do the same here. And I'm even going to do this little bit in here. Switching between your two darkest pencils, which for me is the Burnt Umber and the Dark Sepia. I am now just going to work away on this and darkening down around these outside parts. By adding extra flakes in. And that is all I'm going to do until I'm at a point where I'm happy that everything is, it looks the way I want it to look. So I'm just going to carry on here for a little bit and I'm adding in some flicks with this darker pencil. And I am favouring the left hand side where I have lined the line art already. Now, when we look at this here in its current state, you can see that it's made the middle part look quite sort of tame and washed out. So what we want to do now is we want to return to our earlier colours that we were using for our flex, which was Bistra and the light yellow ochre. And we are now going to go back in to this centre part and we're going to start building up some more of these flicks on our wood grain effect because we want this to stand out because it is further forward than our background. So I am focusing again more on round the edges, but I'm adding in a few lines into the middle here and there just to get that nice sort of balance. Now I'm going to put more in on these back petals because they are in the background. So I'm going to have more bistro than the, the light yellow ochre. And that's just about adding the depth that's there and making sure that the ones that are supposed to be near the front look like they're near the front. So I'm not doing anything special, I'm just flicking away. I really am just flicking away. This little bit here I've left really, really pale because I think it's going to be on a on a you know a closer layer to the top. So that's quite important that I leave that as pale as possible for the moment. The stalk or the stem is going to be the same sort of thing. So I am going to use the same colours as before. as I did with the flower. I've just realized I've missed a tiny little patch in here as well. This is not going well today. Okay, let's let's just fix this just now. So these are my background colors. I'll just pop them in and then take my bee strewn. There we go, it's, it's fine, it's okay, it's probably fine. Now when you're working with something that's up and down like this and it's very thin, don't worry too much about it because what we're going to do is we're really going to make that stand out not by what we're putting inside the stock but what we do outside i.e the same thing that we were doing here so what we want to do is because it's such a thin area and it's it's top to bottom rather than across the way i'm just going to go straight in with the the dark sepia and i'm going to line it and i'm going to pull that line out quite a bit And I'm going to line it on both sides. On the right hand side I'm going to keep it a bit finer and on the left hand side I'm going to exaggerate that a bit more. 
And once I've done with the sepia, I'll go to the next latest color and I'm gonna add in some of that down there as well. Now you can see that that's making the stock pop out a lot more. I'm switching between the light balance here so that you can see the difference in different lights because it is quite an awkward set of colours to work with when you're working on a camera. So you're now getting the, the general consensus of what we are after. So I'm going to continue on down here. That's the wrong pencil, that's not very helpful with my darkest pencil. And I'm just going to fill this in. Like so. Because what you've got to remember as well is because we have things going in front of it, we're going to have more flex and flicks coming off this as well. And we don't want it all getting, you know, too, far too busy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do these two in exactly the same way as this one. And I'm going to speed it up and I'll catch up with you again in just a little while. Okay, there we go. That's uh, I got through that quite quickly, which was nice. I'm obviously quite well practiced now and I didn't realise it. <laughs> so that's us effectively looked at a lighter way of doing the wood cutouts. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch the colour combination slightly so that it gives us a, a different sort of tone and a different look to what's going on. So we're going to skip the cream altogether this time. We're going to start with the light yellow ochre, which is jasmine and mango in the other sets. So we're going to go to these uh, fronds here because they're sort of next in line in terms of the, the, the layers, as I was talking about. So I'm going to put these two together. I don't want to make things too complicated myself. So I'm just going to put a light layer of that down. Now I have to decide if anything else is on the same layer. I don't know why I'm doing quotation marks because that's not a place to use them and you guys can't see my fingers anyway. I think that these two might be the same sort of idea, if I'm truthful. So I'll do that with these ones. So we've we've used that. So we're going to go to the next colour down now, which is the brown ochre. And we're going to start our flicks exactly the same as before. 
Now what I found doing this was, you know, by mixing up the different combinations of the colours, it helped him to experiment and find the, you know, the different combinations that I liked and to give me different wood types, if you understand my meaning. And it just helped experimenting a wee bit. So I fully, fully advocate trying out different combinations and obviously different pencils. I'm just giving you guys this as a, a sort of starting off point. So we're going to go to the Burnt Umber and I'm going to start just adding in some of these on top. Now if at any point you feel your flecks are getting a bit out of hand or you know they feel as if they've gone too far then if you're doing in your foreground take your cream pencil and you can run it over the top and it'll just soften the lines out a bit and lighten things up a little bit but I'm going to do that anyway just for fun. It's up to you, but that's something that I found quite helpful again when I was experimenting and I was trying it out, was just to run that cream pencil over things. And it also helps to kind of warm it back up as well. Because what, what's happening now, as you can see, is that the, the background is starting to look very um very pale in comparison and that's what we want we want it to fade into the background so it does make sense that your lines that you're flicking out here are going to stand out more and sometimes it can look like a bit much so that's a handy hint for that so what we want to do now is just go back to the yellow ochre i'm getting really confused with my pencils now yes the yellow ochre which is jasmine or mango and just put in another couple of flicks with that to make it really rich and deep now what we're going to do is the same again, but we are just going to use the dark sepia this time. So this is our darkest colour. So I'm going to outline those left hand lines again. Now I want this to be really obvious that that is coming over the top of the stock because it is in front of it. So I'm kind of exaggerating that where it overlaps a little bit. And then what I want to do is I want to add my flicks in but I'm not going to flick over where the overlap is because this stem has also been carved. So we want to leave it alone. So don't, don't go all the way down over the top of that. Leave the stem. And just to keep in with the rest of everything that we're doing here, I'm going back to my slightly lighter brown that we've just used, which is burnt umber for me. And I'm just going to add in a little bit of this as well. Maybe in there as well. And then I'm going to continue around and just finish off these stalks. And I'm going, in fact, I'm going to come and do this little bit as well because it is only a tiny bit. There's not really much to do in here. And I would really say when you're in little spaces like this, just use your eye. Stick in a couple of flicks. Uh, it's not going to be that noticeable, honestly. <laughs> but by having that dark section in there, that is going to help the rest of it stand out, despite it supposing to be round here but if you've ever looked at a wood car carving in the nooks and crannies it's sort of dirt and things start to build up and they do generally look darker or if they've been varnished sometimes the varnish sits in them so there's no real disaster there so for this outside edge now i'm not going to use the darkest pencil i'm going back to the second darkest and i'm just going to add in some more flicks here to sharpen again And just really darken down that edge where the, the line art is because I don't want the, the black lines to kind of take away from what, what we've done. I'm not disguising them, I'm just helping, helping them to blend in a little bit better. <laughs> so we're going to do the same down here as again. We're just going to start with this, this darker colour over the front of our stem. I'll pop, pop a little bit in there as well. Oh, I made a boo-boo there. Oh. I suppose if I've done that one, I should really do that one, shouldn't I? Yeah, bit of a continuity issue here. Damn, there's no quality control in this channel. <laughs> Just a few flicks with the darkest pencil because you don't want it to overwhelm what's going on. And then back with your second darkest, so that's your, um, your dark brown. And get on in there. Just start to darken up a little bit. And there we go. So now you can see what's happening with the background. We had this very pale beginning and you can see it's now starting to disappear in between all the parts that we're adding. And that's what builds up to this nice sort of richness. And it's 
you know it's really what what takes the time you can see here things start to get like you know quite a little bit busy in there but that's that's ideally what you want that is perfect so we're going to move on to these the rest of these fronds i have this one that's poking out on its own and you know what i'm just going to include it with these ones because i'm not i'm not going to change the color combination into you know something else just for that one tiny little bit so we've got these slightly darker ones in here so we're now going to go back to the original combination that we used here so we're alternating so we're starting with our cream and i'm going to do these a bunch at a time just because it's easier so i'll start with this one here just seeing as it's right next to my hand so scribbling down that layer of cream and then i'm taking the the next lightest color and i'm going to start putting my flicks in not being terribly careful at this stage because we've got a couple of a uh, couple of layers to go in this but you want to make sure you are covering the whole the whole section because you don't want it to look you know really patchy now i think i'm going to go a bit easier here and try and make this look a lot lighter than the other two but i still have to make it look wood like so when i go in with my next color down i am going to add these flicks in but not as many of them just to keep you all with me this is the brown ochre so there you go you can see i'm being a bit more careful and there is a significant color difference between this one and this one which is exactly what i was after get some really big lines in there just for fun I'm feeling it's looking a bit patchy so I'm going to go back with my cream pencil and I'm going to go back over this and just warm it up, soften it off a little bit whilst keeping those flicks there, you know they're, they're still there, they're not disappearing but they're just a bit, a bit softer. Okay so we're going to take our second darkest colour, so back to my burnt umber here. Okay so in with the flicks. Now you can see it's starting to join up here again and we're starting to get that sort of darker wood effect underneath. So just pick and choose where you want to put your lines. But see, generally when I'm doing this round the outside like this, I do keep them much closer together than I do with the, the background flicks like these ones. I think it's just all about variation and sort of getting your eye into it and finding out what what you think looks good because I mean this is very very subjective okay so I'm taking my darkest color I'll do that first so I'm going right down here because this one's in front there we go and we'll do this one up again just make that nice and dark and then we go flicky flick flick off we go I would like to try this with uh, some really rich sort of red tones um, you know like earthy red tones like kind of terracotta and like a, a pompey in red I think it would look marvellous in that so that's that might be my next endeavor i think it's going to be a while before i do an entire picture again because i am not going to lie i was starting to lose the will to live a little bit i have patience but i don't have that much patience <laughs> oh dear okay can you see where we're going with this now guys is this making sense to you right so that's really the, the general idea for the entire picture. So I'm going to go and finish the rest of these and then we're just going to go over the finishing touches and that is us done. So I'll speed this bit up and I'll catch you guys in a little bit.
Okay, so when we see it from this distance now, you can see it's really, really starting to take shape. But when you step back and look at the picture, that's when you start to see things. And I can tell straight away that these fronds here and these ones are too light. So we really are, we're into the tweaking stage now. The last thing that we need to do, which is really important before we start tweaking it and getting it to our preference, is the fact that this circle is inset inside this frame if you want to call it so we have to take our darkest pencil so dark sepia espresso dark brown whichever set you're using and we need to run this all the way around the outside and it needs to be quite a thick line and it's so that it generates that illusion that this is inset down below in this frame so get that pencil. It doesn't have to be sharp because if it's slightly blunt, it's actually going to give you a softer line and a slightly thicker line as well. But it's up to you whether you want it to be a little bit more precise. When I'm doing circles like this as well, I find it easier to turn the page as I go. Um, it just seems to give me a much smoother circle, even though you're following a line anyway. There is a standing joke about artists that they can create masterpieces, but none of them can actually draw a circle. I concur. I am one of those people. I can't even follow a line that already is a circle, let alone draw one freehand. <laughs> You can see how much of a difference that's making already, just in the, you know, the whole carving idea and the woodiness of it. I know that's a terrible phrase to use, but I can't really describe it any other way other than woodiness. So I'll just turn in this round now. There we go. Okay, so that is all the step-by-step -step stuff done. Those are the steps that you need to take. The next part is where your talent and your eye for being a colorist comes in. And it really is just down to preference. As I mentioned, the first thing I can see is that these fronds here for me are standing out too much. So I want to take the brown colour that I was using for my flicks in here, which was a brown ochre for me. 
and I just want to add a few more of those in and again I'm not going crazy I'm only adding one or two and then I'm going to go back excuse me with my light yellow ochre and I'm just going to very lightly colour over them and that's just to deepen that colour down because they just look really really pale So in terms of colour balance, I'm happy. What remains for me to do now is where these overlap onto each other, we still have to put some flicks in because they are still wood grain. But we have to do it very, very carefully. And the reason that I leave this until the end is because it lets you see the colour balance in the picture and where all the, the rest of your flicks are because that can heavily determine how many you want to put in and how heavy you want them to be. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take my brown ochre and on these lightest leaves where there is an overlap on the underside frond leaf, whatever you want to call it, which is this side, I really want to darken that up a little bit because it's tucked in behind. So I'm going to make that quite pronounced there. I'm going to take my next darkest brown and then I'm just going to add in some flicks. So this is like the flicky version of shading your drawing. And I'm just gonna graduate that up. And you can see the depth that that creates from this distance, it really does help. Taking this brown ochre again, where there's this overlap here, I'm gonna work in there, still in the flicky motion, but really close in to the overlap. And just start adding that in. So it's kind of overshadowed on both sides by the one in front and the one over the front of it there. So I'm going to do the same with this back one here. Really give it some depth. It is important to get those fundamentals down first. That is, it is really, really important that you do that. But after that, you have to keep working away because that's what makes it more believable and more wood-like. So the same with this one here. This has an overlap. So I'm taking this ochre pencil and I'm running it in my flicky motion up the side of where that overlap is just like that so I'm still keeping the paleness of it but it just lets you see that I've acknowledged that there is some going to be some sort of colour difference in there if it's been overlapped by something else with these darker ones in at the back I'm going to do the same thing but I'm going to do it with my second darkest pencil and I'm being very careful here because they're pretty dark already and it's just to get that depth in at the bottom there so basically all you need to do now is work your way around the picture and add in anything like that that you want to make it look a bit more 3D or you know just add in a bit of a bit more interest or a bit more variation. It's up to you where you want to do it. I tend to go for the overlapped areas. So I'm going to do it here as well where this stem is tucked in behind and I'm still using that flicky motion. You just can't see it because it is a very thin piece of wood. And inverted commas there's those there's those inverted commas again and do the same here nothing overlapping there no nope, that's absolutely fine okay so the next thing that i want to do is to take my darkest pencil again now that i've filled in all my sort of overlap areas and that sort of thing i'm going to take my darkest pencil and i am going to flicky flick flick in the absent areas so the areas that is actually the background so in between, helps if it's in shot, in between here and this section here, using that darkest pencil. And I'm just going to do the same thing, work my way around, make it quite intermittent. I don't want it to be, you know, like a picture frame. So your options now are to leave it as it is. Or if you're like me and you just can't leave things alone. Because we've added in all the detail and it's looking quite rich now, you can see that the background looks really plain, really boring and really washed out. So what we want to do is we want to start joining up all of our flicks a little bit more in the background. And it's just to make it look a little bit more cohesive. So going back in with my second darkest brown, so light umber, burnt umber or dark chocolate, depending on your pencil set with a really 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 light hand and again i would practice this out with your coloring book before you actually start on this just if you're not confident and all i'm going to do is start adding in flecks these darker flecks 
in between where all the bald spots are basically. So you can see the difference between this part here and this part here already. And I'm just going to build this up very, very gently. So I'm varying whether it's an up or a down flick, depending on the area that I'm in. I'm keeping my pencil sharp, but a light hand, because I still want the definition of those marks. But I don't want them to be dirty, great, big, you know, really obvious, thick lines. It's alright if one or two are, li are like that. That's That's kind of, that's probably better actually. But we're just trying to make this backdrop a bit more cohesive because it does look quite disjointed so we'll do this that's coming together nicely I'm really pleased with how this is coming together now and that's exactly what it seems to do it just seems to bring everything together as an actual picture rather than sections that we've been colouring and it's up to you how far you take that or how dark you want it I like it quite pale because it makes everything else stand out a little bit more. Now I'm quite happy with this in this capacity, however a lot of people will feel that it's still too bitty and just sort of uh, not quite cohesive. If that's the way that you feel, you can co go back to your original background colour. So either the putty beige, the warm grey too, or the taupe. And as we did before, you can just start and pop a really light layer over the top to soften out those grainy parts and just warm it up a little bit. And that is a lovely touch as well. Uh, I'm quite happy with it the way that it was, but again, as I've said a gajillion times, I like texture, I like a little bit of white in the paper, and I know to some people that looks really unfinished. So this is a way just to help you polish it off, especially for those of you who like to burnish things. Don't try and burnish this because you will ruin it, but it gives that sense of, you know, completion, that last layer, just a little bit more finished, that sort of thing. So there we go, let's have a zoom out and look now. And that is how you can create a wood effect in your books with coloured pencils. Guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's made sense. I know I've kind of gone like a convoluted way about it. And it's something I say all the time. These things sound absolutely fine in my head, but I know that sometimes they don't translate very well. So the takeaway point from this is really that it's down to experimentation, finding what you like. The only real technique that I've used here is that sort of flicky motion and getting that uniform and getting it to go either straight up and down or across the way. I favour up and down, I find it easier. That's what takes practice. Everything else is stuff that most of you already do, is figuring out what colours go together and working out what background colours should look like compared to foreground colours and having that contrast. A lot of you are already there with things like that. So I would say to you, please experiment. If you try it with different colours, for some reason I would love to see someone do it in purple. Uh, if anybody has a shot at that, please share it with me either on uh, Instagram or Facebook. And if several of you have a go and send it to me, I can show it in a future video to give some other people some inspiration. So let me know what you think, guys. Leave me a comment down below. And thank you once again for joining me in the cave for some colouring. I'm probably going to go now and uh, finish this border. And here is the finished article in all its glory. Those butterflies were a little bit fiddly, but it's turned out reasonably well and I'm quite happy with the end result. So once again, thank you so much for joining me. If you've liked this, please leave a thumbs up and I'll look forward to your comments as always. You can also contact me on my social media here or check out some other videos. See you next time in the cave, guys. Bye bye.